Det är bra allt. Thank, thank you, Sharif. To conclude this, let everybody hear. We Muslims up here are talking about one God. We are talking about worshiping of one God. These Christians came up. They talked about the worship of the Son of Man, the worship of the Son of God, the worship of angels, and they didn't even touch Trinity yet. So the listeners can choose a religion which teaches you to only worship one and true God, or a religion who teaches you to worship the Son of Man, the Son of God, even angel worship. Choice is yours. But to end with this, this Mr. D guy, he made the blunder. Why? He quoted chapter 1 of John, verse 18. I promise you, if the other Christians read the same verse, they won't read it like him. Why? Because there is a big forgery. And based on this forgery, he wanted to prove Jesus is God. So they teach us what the Quran says in chapter 3, verse 24. Because of their forgery, they are misled. Thank you all very much. No problem. Barakallahu feekum to all the Muslims. All throughout the Bible, you only take refuge in God. You can never take refuge in man. Um, the, the weakest argument to the Ansigan farm, um, farm, farm boys bring is root, but that's not a very strong one because it's still going back to taking refuge in God. So um, son of man is always, um, son of man, if check Ezekiel, um, the son of man is still the same word of the Lord that I spoke of earlier, which who is called God. And this is why the, the high priest recognized what Jesus Christ was saying when he said, and indeed you see the son of man standing at the right hand side of God. He was quoting Daniel and he was quoting Psalms 1, 1, 10 and he was quoting Daniel chapter 7. So um, this is the understanding. So the son of man is not a refuter for Christians at all because when, uh, when Jesus Christ used son of man, he was referring to the Daniel. Yes, you've landed. Ali, are you there, brother? Assalamu alaikum to the room. Hi, everybody. Okay, Ali, you see, his you whole respond? argument is, is based on the Son of Man. You see, Son of Man in Hebrew and in Aramaic is Barnasha or Bani Adam, which means a human being, which means a mortal. And the book of Psalms says, there is no salvation in the Son of Man. Go ahead, Mr. D, and tell us the Son of Man brings you salvation. Then I tell you, you are going against the Old Testament. Yeah, as I mentioned oh, no, earlier. Wow, not in one minute. Well, are you sure, brother, you landed? Do you have one minute, Akhi? Bro, is, Akhi, is Ali. enough. He's going against the Old Testament. So go ahead and tell us how you're going against the Old Testament, please, Mr. Yeah, B. Yeah, as I, I just mentioned. Okay, you have one minute, Yeah, D. As, as I mentioned, I believe he came in late. As I mentioned earlier, the Son of God, um, there's usage of Son of God and um, all throughout the Old Testament. And I cannot act in denial deny that Son of God sometimes just means chosen people. Or however, in the second temple period leading, leading to the um, uh, leading to Christ, the Son of God was known as a divine person. This is why all the apostles all centered the doctrine around the Son of God being the key reason for writing the gospel. Now, the Son of God um, being spoken of, the Son of God being spoken of, Jesus Christ used that same statement in the when the high priest asked, "Are you this the Son of God, the the Christ, the Son of God?" And he, re he responded, "Yes, I am." And you say the, you say me sitting on the right hand side of God. He was quoting from Daniel's and Psalms. And if you look at Ezekiel chapter one verse twenty seven, you will see that the Son of Man is known as the Son of God, who is known as the Word of the Lord, the Shekinah of Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, if you look at the Jewish Targums. I, before you join the room, Ali, I gave, I pro provided evidence um, of the Targums saying, in the beginning, the Son of God created the heavens and the earth. In other Targums, you see, the Word of the Lord created the heavens and the earth. Because I'm too fast, and I don't know you guys are picking anything. Yeah, we I understand it, you sure. All right, Fab. Because I normally speak, so I try to speak slowly because I do start. Remember, you have now 10 seconds, bro. Don't waste your time. Keep going. So, yeah, I'll, I'll land with it. Anything you, you, you can bring to rebut that, that's fine. Sure. You see, you okay. yourself no started. Alaikum as salam. You see, Mr. D, you yourself started to say the term son of God is a term for chosen people, right? Yeah, I agree. You was used, but exactly. Uh, but, uh, Exodus chapter four, verse twenty-two. Yep. Yahweh talks to all of Israel and calls all of them 
my sons, my firstborn monogenes. He calls them all. So you agree with me that all of the Jews are the monogenes of God? Yeah, hundred um, percent. For the Old Testament, as I said, the usage in the Old Testament and the beautiful. So you said the Son of God is God, and you already told us all of the Jews are the Son of God. How many gods do you have? <laughs> oh, you just missed. Mr. D, just... Mr. D, one second. Let him land, brother Adia. Did you land? Yes, Akhi, he can tell us how many gods does he have. He said the Son of God is God, according to Second Temple Judaism. And he already told us that the whole Israel is the Son of God. So tell us how many gods do you have? Yeah, as, as I mentioned earlier, oh, I'm timing myself one minute, sorry, so it starts now. So um, as I mentioned earlier, um, using the Son of God, this is just like, you know, how Moses was called Elohim. It doesn't mean Moses is Yahweh. I mentioned, I brought, I told you guys about the Death Scroll 4246. We talks about the divine Son of God being unique. I brought about the Targums that says that um, shows that the word of the Lord is called the Son of God. And these are the arguments that we used earlier. Um, you see in the writings of, of um, St. Saint, Saint Antinatius, for instance, uh, when he was trying to put the pieces together, the angel of the covenant is called the Son of God. Who is the Lord of the temple? Obviously, it's, um, it's the Lord, Son of God. And the Father is also, also called the Lord of the temple. So the point I'm trying to make is, I, I, I admit that sons of God were used in the Old Testament. I think Adam's also called the son of God. But if you look at the te New Testament in its right understanding, the context, the son of God usage by the disciples was all going back to the word of the Lord who reveals the Father and uh, in the Old Testament because the son of God was the one that revealed the Father all throughout in the Old Testament. So you see statements like from Irenaeus, was it not the son that appeared to Moses in the bunny bush? This is how they understood this. So the son, and if you check the Targums, is the word of the Lord that appeared to Moses in the bunny bush. So the point, okay, that's it. You see, everybody heard my question. He said the son of God is God, and he told us that all of the Jews are the sons of God. My simple question was, how many gods are there? He did not answer it. He went to Targumim, he went to Zohar and whatnot, he went to Athanasius to tell us, you see, the son of God appeared to Moses. You sure you want to go there? If you say the son of God appeared to Moses, which son of God was it? Secondly, if you go to the book of Acts chapter 7, it goes against the book of Exodus where God appeared. You see, if you go to the book of Haggai, Haggai is the angel of the Lord. In the book of Isaiah, priests are the angel of the Lord. If you say the angel of the Lord is God, which means Haggai is God, priests are God, all of the Jews who are the sons of God are God. It keeps get worse and worse with your polytheism. Okay, one second, Mr. D. That one minute, see. One, I, that one that second. One minute, you know? Bro, that wasn't more than one minute. I'm, 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 I'm the mud. Yeah. Bro, I, I got you. Your timer's, I don't know why it's it's wrong. Okay, okay. Now, uh, anybody else that's Christian wants to talk, you have the chance. I'm giving you guys the chance, bro. Lita, yeah, anybody. Bro. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. I would just say that. Um, hey, unless Mr. D, D you're a scholar and you guys just want him to talk the whole entire time, don't blame us for not allowing you to talk, bro. Yeah, we'll, we'll support no, him. Fine. Yeah, I don't mind Mr. D talking. Over in Zika, sorry, please. Ezekiel 2 was what caused Ezekiel First one, you see, don't even know these Christians no, come to us, talk out. about Zohar and whatnot. Please read the Bible. Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 1 talks about the Son of Man. Ezekiel chapter 127, you brought it up. Go read. It talks about the genitals of God. The same passage which you say is the same. One I'll finish with second. this, Afi. Okay, go ahead. I'll finish with this. I'll finish with this. You see, there are many commentaries which says what he says. Ezekiel chapter 127, commentaries are saying, you see, it is talking about the Father and the Son. I know that. But if you go to the Hebrew, the Hebrew word there is montayem. Montayem literally means genitals. So your God, which is described with his genitals, is talking about Jesus according to them. Okay, go ahead, Mr. D. Now, yeah, as I said, he misquote. That's why I was trying to correct that part because he said in Ezekiel. Can I go after Mr. D? 
Oh, Mr. Oh, yeah. Did, you, you want to give on, Lita a chance to speak yeah, now? Give, yeah, 100%. Lita, please. Okay, Lita. Go ahead, Lita. One minute, Lita. Yeah, it's only going to be one minute. Thanks, Mr. D. I, with, no to problem. me, make Jesus the son of God and not the other prophets the son of God because he was born of God from a virgin Mary. So just like a man, if he has sex with his wife and he has a child, that makes that child his daughter or his son. So the fact that Christ and no other person was born of God's spirit, that was, that's what makes him the son of God. So God okay. had sex with Mary. You just implied God had sex with Mary. And that's why he they, that's their child. Is that what you're saying? No, I said he son. put his spirit in the Virgin Mary. That's what I said. So he, well, no, but then you implied, then you implied by saying just like a man, when a man has sex with his wife, and they had, you, you, those are the words you use. So the right, implication yeah, I'm is just saying that would be a son. Oh, right? Hold on, so Lita, Lita, one it? second, one second, Lita, one second. Let this brother finish, just like we heard you out, and then from there, you you can respond. So yeah, this is what I've been saying for years that you know when when you let a Christian talk, they'll they'll expose what they what they how they understand Jesus being the Son of God. So she just like, showed it. She just said just like when a man has sex with his wife and they have the child, that's their child. So now she's applying that same scenario to God. Well, Whether it was God's true, spirit, so, so, again, look, bro, bro, that's what she said. That don't go, that, don't you get into it. She said it. Let her speak for herself. She used the same analogy of a man having sex with his wife. She said it, not us. Those are her words. But I've saw, I've seen this over the years that many times Christians will, will, when you let them talk on their own and don't interrupt them and let them explain it, they will explain it just. Like okay, this. so now, just brother, like this, man oh, brother, should be I'm sorry. Well, God is. Right? You should use that in explanation. Okay, so now, yeah. this is your chance. Okay, I, I, I this, okay. One second, Brother Ali, because we want to give them a chance. Okay, whoever wants to reply, G1, CJ, that you put your thumbs down, you can reply now. Yeah. Mr. What's D, up, one second. Go ahead, CJ. Uh, I believe she had did, but I don't think that's what she meant. I feel the analogy that she was trying to present is that when what's it called uh a father and mother has a child the child comes from you know the father and mother which they're related by so i think she's talking about that the son of god relates to the father in terms of essence that's what that's what i believe but which because listen, sure who is this guy who writes court? first corinthians and second corinthians and is telling them i father you to the yeah. whole corinthians who is this guy Again, I need a verse. I okay, it is Paul, First Corinthians chapter Ali? four, verse fifteen. Go read it. Paul is telling them, "I fathered you." You are telling me, you see, Jesus is the Son of God because He was fathered by God, but not literally fathered as you are being fathered. No, spiritually of some kind. Okay, if it is not literal, and Paul is fathering all of those Corinthians. What is the difference then? Remember, guys, we're, we're going to go back to everybody's going to take a little chance. One minute one each, minute. okay? Okay, one very minute. good. Okay, hold on. So now he gave you the verse. You guys can choose either to read it or explain the verse. G1 or Amos, you guys are the two that want to answer this. And then Brother Ali can answer or Brother Shadid, whoever wants, but everybody gets one minute. Go ahead. Almost. Yeah, so it's referring to First Corinthians chapter four verse fifteen and Second Corinthians chapter six verse eighteen. But I believe it's misunderstanding what the definition of a spiritual father is, which is what Paul is referring to. So a spiritual father is someone who feeds the people with spiritual wisdom and knowledge. So a pastor could be considered a spiritual father. But in that same sense, which Paul is saying that he fathered the church of Corinthians we should not look at that in the same sense which you know the father fathers jesus you know i believe you're misunderstanding the two definitions again so. beautiful okay, so, so you landed almost we don't want to cut you off have you landed uh yeah i, I just want to okay know brother ali, ali you want to answer oh, that beautiful you see he told us when you read father does not mean literal is it spiritual the I word the spiritual that. is not in the verse Go read it, First Corinthians 4.15. It talks about father. What is the Greek word for father here? It's ganeo. The same word is used in Matthew chapter 1, verse 16. And Jacob became the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, by whom was born 
Jesus, the same word is used, not only that, in Matthew chapter 2, the same word is used, Jesus was born, but not only that, let me give you Father. You see, in the uh, book of Acts, yeah, God is talking to them, you are my son, today I have Father Jew. The same way God has Father Jesus, the same word is used by Paul for Corinthians. The same word is used. So if you say when God is talking to his son, that means in essence, that means pre-incarnation, that, that means for eternity. The same word is used, Paul, for Corinthians. Paul is telling them, I father you, come tell us it was in his essence, it was from eternity, the same as Jesus, the same word are used here. Brother Ali, uh, <clears throat> go ahead. You landed, Brother Ali, 100%? Yeah, yeah I'm finished. Uh, maybe okay. uh, a Muslim, no Jacob said, you can take my turn. I'll be yeah. listening. Um, within the context of each scripture, you have to understand why the term father is used. So, for example, in 1 Corinthians, as I explained, Paul is referring to them as being their spiritual father. And I believe you brought other verses, but you, you was conflating so many texts that just I couldn't keep up. But yeah, so spiritual father, as I said earlier, is just it's just like a pastor. That's it. If I was to explain it to you in layman terms, it's, it's, it's basically a pastor. Okay, let's go over so to your oh, understanding. Oh, brother Ali, one second, yeah. brother Ali. Oh. Let him land. One second, one second. Go ahead, Amos. Land your point so Ali can answer. If not, he can pass the mic to Muslim or Shadid or somebody else. Go ahead, Amos. Land your yeah, point. He can, he, he can speak. Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll talk okay. for 20 seconds, then I'll give it to Jake or Shadid. No no problem. Problem. You see, he said, I don't understand it. I'm conflating. When they were talking about Jesus being the Son of God, none of them gave any context what it means. All of them said, you see, oh, it goes back to the essence. It's from the same essence. It's different than all of the other Jews, which are called the Son of God. First Corinthians 4.15 is very clear. Paul is saying, I father you. He says, I, Ganeo, all of you. The same word, Ganeo, is used by the father for Jesus. For Jesus, when the God is, uh, father is telling you, Jesus, you are my son. Today I have begotten thee. The same meaning Paul uses for the Corinthians. So if you want to take one of them, a spiritual, why all of a sudden when he's talking about the father oh it's more than that it's unique and whatnot but i'm finished maybe the brothers can take it on all right one second before the brothers take over let the christian reply and then one of the muslim brothers will reply because we don't want to be unfair to everybody so who from the christians wants to speak you want to speak i just want to ask one yeah, question yeah, after. Yeah. inshallah inshallah go ahead who wants to speak yeah i don't man yeah what's the good to add on to what Amos is saying as well um you know what's the called even paul himself in the pre what's going in the next verse he gives an example right so in verse 17 it says that is why i sent you timothy my beloved and faithful child in the lord he will remind you of the way of the life in christ jesus which exactly what i teach everywhere in every church so you can understand that he called timothy his beloved child within christ so you can see that aspect um that what's it called paul is trying to present is that um paul is a father figure of timothy because we can understand that timothy isn't paul's literal father right it's because it's reinstating what amos is saying that what's it called paul is timothy's spiritual father so in the aspect where ali is using it it's not suiting it's not suiting habiro Okay, so Brother Shadid, Brother Muslim, uh, Jake, Rodeo, who wants to respond? Or do you guys want Ali to respond? You guys let me know. No, you see, he's been inconsistent. He says the same word, Ganeo, is used for Jesus. That means more than son. But when Paul is calling Timothy his child, you see, he's spiritual. Okay, as you understand the childness of Timothy for Paul, we understand the childness of Jesus for God. We are being consistent. You are not. So this is all I have to say. Can I respond? 
Yeah, do you want you, you guys can so, respond? So, Go ahead. So what you need to understand is right. So when we say the, what's it called? Jesus is the son of God, right? And Jesus is the son of the Father. We're trying to talk about a relationship between the Father and Son. We understand that it doesn't mean that's the, what's it called Jesus, right? <laughs> and the Father had sex with another mother to create Jesus. In the case we well, can we understand. We, we, hold on, hold on. We can one second, guys. One second. Naji one land, and then Brother Shadid, you go, inshallah. It, it could be used to show the relationship between two parties, which that's why Jesus is called the Son of God, is to show the relationship between him and the Father in terms of essence as well. That's what yeah, you have to understand. Yeah, 15 seconds, day one. Yeah, that's where you have to understand the distinction depending on the context which the Son of God is used all right, perfect. Brother Shadi, go ahead, Akhi. Yeah, just saying that, yeah, again, you, that's your position, but Lita clearly used the father, a man having sex with wife. She said that out of her mouth. We heard it. That might be, not be your position. Oh, she said that? One second, guys. One second. Oh, no, no. One second. Oh, okay, let, okay. Let, let, yeah, let Shadi uh, finish. Go ahead, Shadi. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, brother. Yeah, we heard it. She said, she said, just like a man having sex with his wife. She said, that's what she said. Those are the exact words that came out of her mouth. But I'm not surprised because I've heard many Christians use that analogy. I've heard Christians say, well, just like, you know, when, when a polar bear has sex with another polar bear, they have another polar bear. So in this same way, Jesus is the son of God. He's God. It's, it's like, so it's clearly they're using, this is how they understand it. They understand that when one animal has sex with another animal, it produces the same kind of animal. I've heard all kinds of giraffes having sex. That they use these examples. But she used it perfectly. A man has sex with his wife, and this is how Jesus the son. I was like, there you go. The implication is clear. Implication is clear. You other Christians may not take that position, but there are many Christians who do, who are simple in their understanding, and they understand it just like that. Right? Well, one second. You you other that, guys, other guys, guys, guys. Just let Shadid finish, please. Go ahead, Shadid. And then there were other Christians who... To, to, who understood it in different ways. Some understood Jesus was the adopted son of God, right? They say, like, for example, they use verses in with the, uh, is it Romans or Corinthians, where it says Jesus became the son of God, uh, you know, uh, became the son of God after the resurrection. Well, well, it's like a is it, bro. And then there are others who felt Jesus got became the son of God when he got baptized, because, you know, the voice, the, depending on which gospel you read, the voice comes out and says, this is my son. Thanks. Name just that timer now. Okay, good. So yeah, I, as as I said, I'll, I will not um, dispute what Shadi just said now because some, some people later on understood it this way. However, the Bible wasn't written to us. The Bible was written to guys in the Second Temple, and how they would have understood this, as I mentioned earlier, is the way I mentioned it clearly. The Word of the Lord was the one that was interfacing with all the patriarchs from the Old Testament, and He was referred to as the Son of God. If you look at the targums, that you see them being used interchangeably. So when that's, this is why, as I said, looking at the Bible from outside of it, you would think the apostles were forcing the narrative to make Jesus Christ this word of the Lord. Because you see, for instance, in the Targum, it says, When the word of the Lord shall reveal himself to redeem his people, he shall say to the nations, I am he. And you know many times John used that word, I am he, throughout the Old Testament and New Testament, lots of time, just to prove that Jesus Christ is that word of the Lord that was appearing to all the patriarchs. I asked a Jew who gave Moses the Ten Commandments, and do you know what he says? He says, um, the word of the Lord. Obviously, the word of the Lord gave Moses the Ten Commandments. Are you worshipping two gods? Obviously, they say, no, one God. Is the word of the Lord the same as God? Oh, no, that's distinct. So they get into this conundrum when you start breaking things down. Well, that's why Christianity, we understand that the word of the Lord being distinct from the Father was the one that gave Moses the Ten Commandments. It was the Shekinah that they saw his feet in Exodus 24 verse 10. And this is the point I was trying to make. The word of the Lord, this is the reason why they killed, um, killed Jesus Christ because in making the the claims that he is the son of God, his friends, is making the big, big statement that he is God that appeared and to rescue. Ten seconds the left. Right. From... Yeah, I land. Sorry. No, no, no. You well, have ten seconds. You landed, oh, Mr. Yeah, Green? yeah. Don't worry. Uh, there's no. Okay, brother Shadi, go ahead. So yeah, so so no, actually that's wrong because um no the the, the this, this understanding of the word of the Lord is not the Lord Himself. Because when you read further in the Targums and all these other uh, things about these, this, this word of God, it clearly explains that this is an agent of God. It's not God himself. Because they, when, you read, when you read deeper, you see that they understood to them God is, is too high, like high and mighty to, uh, to deal with humanity himself. So because he's so high and mighty to deal with humanity himself, he has this word that acts on his behalf.
completely disagree with, with that analogy. One second. Basically claimed that the Jewish people of the past believed that the angel of God was a different person to God. Well, that is a lie because they believed the angel of God was God himself, actually. And we can prove numerous passages of people claiming that after they've seen the angel of God, they should be dead because they have just witnessed God himself. So that's your interpretation. And we could go read what the Jewish people who saw the angel actually thought. Right. They actually thought they saw God and claimed they should be dead numerous times. <clears throat> Even when the angel of God was questioned, what is your name? Was he was his response, I am an angel sent from God? No, not once. He claimed full authority, even claimed to be worshipped. Can an angel claim worship from humans now? I don't think so. Or are you going to say God gave the, the angel the authority? Hey, hold on, brother Ali. I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let you go. But, then, but here, let me explain. Let me Allow the angel to gain worship. That clearly just goes against the mission of what. That was actually an angel. It wasn't actually God himself, because God can't. It would be impossible for Jacob to have beat God in a wrestling match. But if you want to hold on to that, then you would show how foolish the belief is that God actually came down and got beat into submission by a normal human being. This is this is preposterous, right? But when we read later, we find that yes, this was an angel. It wasn't actually God that got beat in a wrestling match. You see what I'm saying? So it was clear that we, when, we, when we read further, it is explained that the angel of the Lord is not the Lord himself. It is it is an, it's exactly what it is. It's an angel of the Lord, not the Lord himself. Go ahead, Brother Ali. But let's go with these Christians. Let's go with the early church fathers who honored them, said, angel of the Lord is Jesus. Let's go with that. He, the guy here, Emmanuel said, angel of the Lord is God himself. Go ask the Jews. Okay, let's go ask the, ask the Jews. In the book of Haggai, chapter 1, verse 13, Haggai is called the angel of the Lord. You said the angel of the Lord is God himself. That means Haggai is God himself. Not only that, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 42, verse 19, the prophets are called angel of the Lord. You said angel of the Lord is God himself. That means prophets are God, according to you. In the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse 6, Verse 6, the same, prophets are called messenger of Yahweh, angel of God, the same term which you said is God. And in the book of Malachi, chapter, this last one, in the book of Malachi, chapter 2, verse 7, priests are called angel of Yahweh. All of you have told us angel of Yahweh means Yahweh himself. So thank you very much. The politicism here gets keep, keep gets water. Wait, hold on. Let me, can let I me just, from? I just, one second, just guys. One second. Wait, one second. Was that, was one second. Said... Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. From the Christians, you guys can decide amongst yourselves who won. Yeah. Yeah. So we need to understand that, Lee, right? So, Angel of the Lord, I feel like you got a wrong concept of the way we understand it, right? Because remember, Angel in Hebrew means Malek. So, let me put an understanding for you to. You know, understand, right? So when we talk about the messenger of Yahweh, right? Many people can be the messengers of Yahweh. There's no denial of that fact. But what you need to understand is, depending on the context, the message of Yahweh can be divine. For example, when you look in Exodus chapter 3, when you look in Genesis chapter 22, um, Psalm chapter 45 and Zechariah chapter 3, all of these times where the, also called the message of Yahweh has spoken, he was spoken on his own authority and no one else is but his. That's 15 what seconds. Understand. Yeah, that's fine. That's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Can I add to that? You seconds? see? You have yeah, 10 go seconds. Ahead. Go ahead. Well, just, just to add to what he just said, that's what we clearly said, that um, <clears throat> if we go and look at what the angel of God done, he performed his actions on his own account. Like, it, he wasn't sent on a mission from no one. That's what I'm trying to make. Can I respond next? So I do understand. Next round, please. One second, guys. One second. Mr. D, hold on. So just I want to let you guys know something as Christians. If you guys at any point want to go into the Quran as well, you are more than welcome. Right, brothers? Is anybody contesting that they can go into the Quran as well? Right, Ikhwan? Ali? Everybody? Yeah. Yeah, you guys want to bring verses that. from the Quran? More than welcome. Bring verses from the Quran. We can read it with you. So don't think this is just about the Bible. The Quran is open as well for everybody. Okay, guys? Uh, one person ran away. I don't know what happened. Okay. <laughs> we mentioned the Quran. They run. Subhanallah. Okay, Ali, go ahead, brother. You have one minute. No, you see, Akhi, many times they talked about the angel of the Lord, Malachi Yahweh. 
but not once did they say Malach also means messenger. The whole time they were talking about angel of the Lord means God, angel of the Lord means God. Athanasius says that, Justin says that. You see, they brought all of those. Not once did they say Malach also means messenger. Now all of a sudden I'm telling them there are many angels of the Lord. All of a sudden he says, you see, you have to go to the context. You have to go to the meanings. There are different understandings of this. What happened all of a sudden? So you see messenger, Malach is messenger of Yahweh. Translate all of those other Malach, which you say is an angel, also as a messenger. Your whole problem is solved, but you won't do that. Why? Because you come with your Trinitarian understanding, you come with the ad hoc argument, which makes it a fallacy, which means it cannot be the truth. Brother, well, you, have, you literally have 20 seconds left, Akhi. Akhi is enough. The text left? was not true. They come with a fallacy, which is uh, not true. So I made my point less okay. than a minute. No yeah, sorry, just to, rep just okay. to reply, yeah, yeah, I'm going to let machine go. But Ali, if you listen to what we said, we said we could give you numerous examples of people who have met the angel of God and their speech was they have met the God himself and he they should be dead. So we're not talking about what people have translated or understood of what angel of God means. We can see what people, how people were affected when they met the angel of God and what they said and their conversation. That's what we're saying to you. So we're not, forget about what humans of today have translated to what angel of God means. We can go in the text and see what the people who met the angel of God and what they thought this person was. And they thought that was God himself. So that's what we're saying to you. We're not arguing with you or we're just telling you they thought angel of God was God himself. You see, we have here in the book of Isaiah chapter 7 verse 10. Listen to this. And Yahweh continued to speak to Ahaz, saying, ask for a sign for yourself. Yeah? Yahweh is talking here to Ahaz. Those Christians here who told us you have to go to those other people who are there. Here we read, Yahweh is talking to Ahaz. What does Ahaz understand? Any Christian here? Pardon? You see, Haggai. The book of Isaiah chapter 7, Yahweh is speaking to Ahaz. Yeah? Yeah, 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 carry on. In Isaiah chapter 1. Okay, okay. Who is speaking those words? To Ahaz? In, 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 in which chapter and verse answer. The book of Isaiah chapter 7 verse 10, Yahweh is speaking to Ahaz. When Ahaz is standing there, who is talking to him? Are you going back to verse three where it says, then the Lord said to Isaiah, go out and go out and meet Ahaz. So are you saying that? I'm telling you verse 10. So, verse so, 10, I just read it. So, so Isaiah, yeah. uh, so the words of the Lord are being communicated from Isaiah to Ahaz. What is your argument in that regard? My argument is at the time that Ahaz is hearing this, Yahweh is speaking to him according to the text. But yeah. none of you will say, no, it is Yahweh. You see, he's an agent of Yahweh, which is called Yahweh. Because earlier on, God gave his words to that angel of Yahweh, to that messenger of Yahweh, to that agent of Yahweh. And he speaks in authority of Yahweh, saying Yahweh said this. So all of you understand this. But all of a sudden, when it comes to Malachi Yahweh, no, it had to be uh, some distinct uh, entity, you see? So understand it as you understand Isaiah chapter 7, verse 10. To conclude this, let everybody hear, the Muslims up here are talking about one God. We are talking about worshiping of one God. These Christians came up, they talked about the worship of the Son of Man, the worship of the Son of God, the worship of angels, and we didn't even touch Trinity yet. So the listeners can choose a religion which teaches you to only worship one and true God, or a religion who teaches you to worship the Son of Man, the Son of God, even angel worship. Choice is yours. This was my last. Thank you very much.